Coucou tout le monde! Welcome back to Unintentionally Frenchified. I love tackling subjects around French culture, French life, French stereotypes, French language, all seen through the eyes of an American foreigner in France. But today's video is going to be even closer to home because I'm going to be talking to you about stereotypes concerning French mothers. Of course, this is seen from an American Anglo-Saxon point of view. I have an 18-month-old daughter. Her name is Ailé. Eleanor, and I'm constantly wondering, am I parenting more like an American? Am I parenting more like a French? Am I just parenting like a hybrid version of who knows what? So in honor of Mother's Day that's coming up this weekend, today's video is going to be about French mothers. I have done some other videos about French parenting, so check them out. I put them in the description below. Obviously, let me know in the comments your thoughts and feelings about stereotypes around French parenting. Before I spill the dirt on French mothers, I got to share with all of you guys a really amazing Mother's Day discount. Ana Luisa is having 15% off their entire, yes you heard me, their entire jewelry line on their website. My own mother actually used to tell me that Mother's Day was a holiday created by greeting card companies to sell more cards. I could not disagree with her more. As a new mom myself, I think it's really special and kind to take one day out of the year to go above and beyond and thank your mother for all the support, all the energy, all the love, all the crap she dealt with. And so if you're thinking that maybe you want to show a little gratitude with more than just a card, then Ana Luisa is a really great option. Their company is carbon neutral, so very eco-conscious. They use 100% recycled silver and all the pieces have a 365 day warranty. My first order was probably like six months ago and I had these tiny little little Suzanne hoops that I wear every day and honestly I shower in them, I sleep in them, I do everything, I work out in them and I have had absolutely no problems. So honestly quality is also top notch. So I ordered a couple things for myself because hashtag self appreciation on Mother's Day. And what's really great about Ana Luisa is they've got a mix between very chic understated jewelry that you can stack a lot and pair with a lot of different things and then they also have some really great statement pieces if you want something that pops out of it more. So these earrings that I have are a great statement. Pop of color. I love them for summer. And let me pull my hair back a bit for you guys and get a little bit close to the camera. They are called the Kanoko Marble Blue, if I'm pronouncing them right. And you can see that they've got a bit of gold up here. And then they've got like the marble on the bottom. What's really, really cool about them, they come in a mini version as well, if you like it. This version is the normal size version and it's about 57 euros. And what's great is they're hand painted. So every single piece is unique. Nothing is the same. And I think that's pretty special when you're going to be giving possibly a gift for someone and also just pretty special if it's for you. I also got this really dainty ring called the Haley. So I like when it comes to more stuff on my fingers, daintier, a little bit more understated, very much the très chic French style you could say. And this one's called the Haley. It's 50 euros. It is 100% recycled silver, as I said. And then it's got two white little topaz gemstones here on the sides. I'll give you guys a close up as well that you can see so it doesn't quite touch at the top. As I said it's pretty understated so I was thinking of getting some other rings to stack with it. They've got like the paisley that looks kind of nice on there too so I'll probably check that out and see you know I can have self-appreciation whenever I want I guess it doesn't just have to be for Mother's Day. But the Mother's Day sale is going on right now so if you want to get it for 15% off now would be the time. All right so I'm gonna get started with those French mom stereotypes but don't hesitate to go check out Ana Luisa. I put all of the information in the description box below. They have an amazing Mother's Day sale going on right now, 15% off the entire website. But honestly, any time throughout the year is a good time as well to be spoiling yourself or someone else. Say party! So I've got to break up the French mom stereotypes into three different phases because to be fair, the way, the style of French parenting and at least the stereotypes of what most French parents are like change based on the age of the kid. First off, we've got les bébés. So five and under. Generally in the stage of les bébés, the French stereotype that's known pretty worldwide is this woman who is perfectly dressed, perfectly coiffed, is running around in heel booties on cobblestone streets, managing this full-time job, managing to take care of her kids that are very well behaved, managing to put like healthy meals on the table every night, and also teaching her kids that the world doesn't revolve around them and the parents 
needs are just as important as the kids needs. Now don't fret you non-French parents out there if you're like WTF how are they managing to do everything and I'm barely managing to shower once a week. The French women, the French moms are not necessarily managing to do everything and sip rosé on a terrace at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. French moms don't tend to take on the mom look that we all know and love and that I absolutely <laughs> do which is maybe the no shower look because it's just a little bit less culturally acceptable to walk around in their pajamas. That doesn't mean that they're any less tired than you, that they're any less run down than you are. It's just that socially walking around in yoga pants is just not done as much as it is in the US. French moms with younger children aren't necessarily either running around to like 20 different activities on the weekend like a chicken with their head cut off because French parents don't tend to at that age really think that they need to be in Chinese classes, baby Einstein music, and I don't know, anything else <laughs> that we think is necessary. They tend to have a bit more downtime French kids at this age as so then consequently the parents as well. French kids are normally running free in the park well the parents pop on a bench, smoke a cigarette, have an espresso, chat on the phone with their friends. It's just all a bit more casual in that sense. During this age, French parents really value teaching their kid how to be independent, teaching them to figure it out by themselves. We talk a lot about hover parents in the US where you know you're on the playground and the parents are like chasing after the kids and being like, try this, do this, look at this, explore this, and just kind of hovering over their kids. You don't see that a lot in France unless the kid is just like too young to be on their own on the jungle gym. Most French parents are just sitting back and letting their kid just figure it out. And again, most of this goes with the culture that in France, when you have children, there's a lot of pressure from society to kind of jump back to your life as before. Sure, you have a child, so it's never gonna be exactly the same, but as a new parent transitioning to parenthood, in France, they really push this idea that at a certain age, and I'm not saying newborn, but I don't know, at three, four, five months, your kid's on a schedule at that point, they have a rhythm, and it's time for you to kind of refine your rhythm too, because it's not the kid that decides what the family's gonna do, it's the family that decides what the child's gonna do. There's kind of a reverse role going on. Whereas in the States, we tend to put the kid more at the center of attention and we kind of tend to go with what, you know, the kid's rhythm is. And to be fair, this is something that I think you see throughout the entire ages of French parenting. There's always a bit of this idea, I guess I would say, that you don't lose your life because you have children. So yes, there's priorities to be made, there's a balance to find, but that balance should be between what's best for the parents and still their social life and their professional life and whatever makes them tick, along with the balance of what's best for the kids. You don't normally see one a lot higher than the other. Next we've got les adolescents, teenagers as we call them. I obviously have never raised ones, but they strike fear in the hearts of everyone when we hear that word. And stereotypes about French parenting and French mothers at this age tend to differ a little bit. It's harder to nail down as it is with the younger kids or with the young adults. Obviously when you're parenting, you have to parent different based on the child in front of you. My mom always used to say she had four girls and she would say, the way that I parented depended on the child in front of me. What works for you didn't necessarily work for your other sisters. And I know that's true at any age, okay? But we're talking about stereotypes, so you gotta be a little bit general here. So compared to the US, most French moms have the stereotype of being quite strict at this age. And honestly, I think this is linked to education because education in France at this age, so in middle school and in high school, is honestly no joke when you compare it to the type of education in the US. There isn't as much room to be creative, to beat to your own drum, to step out of line, to be really unique. There is of course freedom within a frame in France, but that frame is a lot tighter than what you'd be used to in the US. And French moms have a lot of expectations that their kid fits into that frame. So as I said, that French mom who went from being very carefree, sitting back, not hovering, is all of a sudden gonna be a bit more in there demanding that their kid starts to follow the rules, do what they're supposed to do, and fit into this frame. However, when it comes to actual social life versus school life, the French moms tend to still have a bit more of a carefree attitude, a little less 
strict than you would see in the US. You know, curfews aren't so tight, dating isn't really a big deal, drinking is pretty normal as long as you're not going overboard. They don't have quite the prude culture that we have in the US, and so naturally that flows over a bit in their parenting style. But the stereotype that French moms are quite strict when their kids are in middle school and high school, when it comes to school and expectations to perform at school, I would completely agree with that. I would just say to be careful how much that strict mom stereotype falls over into the kid's personal life because that I think really depends a bit more on the parent and the kid and a little bit less stereotype for sure. And finally, les jeunes adultes. Oh la 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 la, I'm gonna pull it out because this is my favorite stereotype where the French mother takes a total 180. Because now the stereotype of the overbearing mother-in-law who takes a very large place in the family and is still cooking, cuddling, taking care of their 30-year-old kids, this stereotype now comes out to play. In the US, we tend to kind of like kick the kids out at 18, you know? We're happy if they leave, maybe they go to college at 23, they've got an apartment, a degree, they're, you know, have their own job, they're living on their own. It's kind of like a rite of passage for American mothers to be proud of the fact that, you know, I've raised a kid and he is now, he or she is now independent and out of this house. It's not really the ideal scenario to still have your kid living with you at say like 30. In France, having your kid still living at home in their late 20s, the French would probably say, no biggie, who cares, normal. A lot of French kids study at university very close to their house and so they stay at home. And then they stay at home for years saving money and having a job. It's pretty smart, right? So they end up kind of building this new, very close bond and kind of a different relationship with their parents as a young adult living with adults. They've toughened their kids up enough. You know, it's clean sailing now. They're pretty independent and so their role has kind of changed to make sure that they're still taking care of themselves, that they've eaten well, that you know they've got clean clothes and they could maybe do their laundry. And this kind of mother hen type of stereotype is the one that sticks around about French mothers, that they are very involved in their kids' lives even as adults. So I can't wait to hear what you guys say in the comments below about stereotypes around French mothers, about French parenting, because of course with stereotypes, it's a lot of generalization. So I can't wait to hear what your experience is, maybe with your mother-in-law, maybe raising some like Franco-American or Franco-Spanish or who knows babies, but multicultural. I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. So don't hold back. I will see you in the comments below. And of course, please don't forget to go check out Anna Louise 15% off. You guys can get some fun stuff for summer, some fun things for Mother's Day. It's a huge, huge sale right now, so don't miss it. I will see everybody next week. Bisous!